Hey, how's it going? I hope all is well. Fantastic. Let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk about conspiracy theories, the fun matter of beyond. Now there's a lot of conspiracies out there. Some are hard to believe, some are like questionable, but let's dive into psychology of it. And I have a long list of conspiracies, so I'm gonna go through a few of them today and debunk them as well. Now for those conspiracy theorists out there, hope you can stay tuned and keep an open mind of possibility of things as well. Here's a list from Abby Richards, a list of common conspiracies in a column of it's a possibility that it is true and a possibility of uncanny dangerousness. How fun is conspiracies per se? Researchers analyzed data from 170 studies involving over 158,000 participants, mainly from US, UK, and Poland. They focused on studies that measured participants' motivations or personality traits associated with conspiritual thinking. The researchers found overall, people were motivated to believe in conspiracy theories by a need to understand and feel safe in their environment, and a need to feel like the community they identify was superior than others. The researchers also found that people with certain personality traits, such as sense of antagonism toward others and high levels of paranoia, were more prone to believe conspiracy theories. Those who strongly believe conspiracies had a common trait of insecurity, paranoia, emotional violent, impulsive personality, suspicion, withdrawn, manipulative, egocentric, and eccentric. The big five personality traits, extroversion, agreeable, openness, neurotruism, and conscientiousness had a much weaker relationship with conspiritual thinking. Though the researchers said that does not mean that general personality traits are irrelevant due to a tendency to believe in conspiracies. So besides the ones that I'm gonna go over today, here's a little list of some conspiracies out there. Now I'm gonna go over some regular topics of conspiracies. I'm not gonna dive deep into them. I'm just gonna list them. Black helicopters, chemtrails, which I'm gonna talk about today, Korean Airlines Flight 007, Malaysia Airlines MH370, Malaysian Airlines Flight MH17, Deepwater Horizon, New Coke, Death of Nero, JFK Assassination, I have some beliefs in that one myself, Disappearance of Harold Holt, Death of Prominent Figures such as Marilyn Monroe, New World Order, Predictive Programming, George Soros, Freemasonry, Israeli Animal Spine, Harold Wilson, Anti-Semitism, Anti-Armenianism, Anti-Catholicism, Anti-Christ, The Bible and Jesus, Islamists, Anti-Islamists, Paul the Apostle, Racism, Larry's, Crisis Actors, Illuminati in Europe, 9-11 Attacks, Sandy Hook School Shooting, The Clintons, Jeffrey Epstein, African National Congress, Barack Obama, Cultural Marxism, Deep State, Sutherland Springs, Trump, Biden, and Ukraine, Golden Billion threatened Russia, Voting Pencils, which I am very curious about conspiracies on pencils, is it number two or number three? Artificial Diseases, COVID-19 Pandemic, Vaccines, Outer Space, such as extraterrestrials and UFOs, climate change, weather and earthquake control projects, MK Ultra, Flat Earth, weapons in general, targeted individuals, false history that we've learned in schooling. In sports, there's a lot of propaganda on boxing, rigged selection processes, 1984 Firecracker 400, the 1998 World Cup final, New England Patriots as well. So as you can see, there is a long list of interesting conspiracies put upon the world that people try to understand. Now let's dive into deep of why. Usually what I found is lack of information, anxiety, following an in-group of people, and ego of one another. Usually people with conspiracy ideas, they want to be in a group and they have to be right. 
it's not just my opinion, it's many researchers as well. So let's dive deep into one conspiracy. Something that's relevant in the past few years is the COVID vaccine. Nearly all of the ingredients in COVID-19 vaccines are ingredients found in many foods. Fats, sugar, and salts. None of the COVID-19 vaccines affect or interact with our DNA. The following are not included in the vaccines itself. No preservations such as thermosol or mercury or any other preservatives. No antibiotics such as sulfonate and any other antibiotics. No medicines or therapeutics such as ervermetine or any other medications. No tissues such as fetal cells are in it. No food proteins such as eggs or gluten, peanuts, tree nuts, nuts products, or any other products within the nut community. COVID-19 vaccines are not manufactured in facilities that produce food products. No metals such as iron, nickel, cobalt, titan, titanium, or rare earth alloys are in it as well. They also do not have any manufactured products like microelectronics. No latex as well. After the body produces an immune response, it discards all of the vaccine ingredients, just as it would discard any substance that cells no longer need. The process is part of a normal body function. So myth one of vaccines, they are killing people. Yes, the COVID-19 vaccine has been connected to rare incidences of inflammation of the heart, affecting one in 50,000 people in all age groups and one in 6,600 people, mainly males aged 16 to 19, according to research published in JAMA Pediatrics. As far as people know, the inflammation of the heart is temporary and resolves temp within a few days. It may sound scary, but scientists know having COVID without the vaccine has 11 times higher risk of developing a cause of death. Another myth is the vaccines were developed too quickly. Although the coronavirus that caused COVID-19 was first reported at the end of 2019, scientists had already conducted years of research on related coronaviruses that cause SARS, also called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and developed vaccines to protect against these illnesses. The vaccines rely on a technology, mRNA, that has been studied over a decade since at least the initial outbreak of Mars, MERS. Another myth on vaccines, the vaccines change your DNA. The mRNA vaccines were created using genetic technology but they do not affect a person's DNA in any way. The CDC explains that the mRNA in the vaccine gives cells instructions on how to produce a piece of protein called a spike protein, which is similar to a protein on the surface of the coronavirus. This triggers the immune system to produce antibiotics which remain in the bloodstream, ready to fight any future coronavirus infection. So it's sort of like a B vitamin or a, a any alphabet vitamin. So on coronavirus, the vaccine triggers the immune system to produce antibiotics which remain in the bloodstream ready to fight any future coronavirus infection. A little story, Heather Simpson of Dallas, Texas said she turned to wellness groups and became an online influencer over, almost overnight and she posted an anti-vaccine beliefs on Facebook after watching an anti-vaccine documentary. I was convinced, she said, that if I vaccinated my child she would die that night. She said during a Good Morning America interview. That kind of led me into the entire wellness community as a whole. Now Simpson has co-founded a vaccine adversary site called Back to the Vax, as well as a podcast and support group. Simpson said ultimately it was her concern for her four-year-old daughter's well-being that led her to change to vaccines. It's up to you whether you want a vaccine. Just go to your doctor and see if it's okay to get a vaccine due to your health, if you have allergies or whatnot. I got the Pfizer and I had no complications. My brother, I think he got Johnson and he was sick for a day and then he was fine. So it's really up to you if you want it or not. October 4th, phone warning. The concept originated in 1951 when the control of electromagnetic radiation created an alert system for radios to warn Americans about a possible Soviet Union attack. Though the mission proved to be unsuccessful at the time, as missiles were able to interpret 
the radio waves before warning could be sent. The emergency alert system was established afterward, leading to our upcoming nationwide test. It was officially used in the 60s. TikTokers, knowing their history very well, have said it will send a signal to cell phones nationwide in order to activate nanoparticles, such as graphene oxide that have been introduced into people's bodies due to the vaccine. Or it'll also give you a lot of radiation. Now, my question is, if TikTokers are, TikTokers are always on their phone and they're worried about radiation from their phone, why not turn your phone off all the time? Just thought, rather than a little text. I'm sure you get thousands of texts if you're on your phone all the time. Some claim the alert will activate deadly diseases within the vaccinated people, making them become zombies and activating them. So here's my promotion. I am a zombie. This is my first YouTube history of becoming a zombie and the first zombie ever to make a YouTube video. So thanks for joining in. The national test consisted of two portions from the WEA and EAS capabilities. The EAS emergency alert system and WEA was a wireless emergency alert or is. It was a third national wide test. But the second test in history was a WEA. It didn't go to all cellular devices due to problems. The purpose of the test is to ensure that the systems continue to be effective means of warning public about emergencies such as nuclear weapons. So if you're worried about nuclear weapons and you're worried about radiation from your cell phone, just turn off your cell phone and you'll die instantly. If you're worried about nuclear weapons and don't care about phone radiation, keep your phone on and maybe you can get some cover. Chemtrails is another conspiracy, also known as contrails or condensation trails, are what you are actually seeing in the sky behind jet engines of airplanes. When an aircraft is in the air, the jet engine emits water vapor and also very low amounts of particles such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, sulfur gases, and soot or metal particles, but it's only the water vapor that you see in the sky because the other particles burn off during flight. So if you're worried about all these chemicals, turn your car off and do an RC model car and go to the grocery store on that little vehicle because your car is quite toxic itself. The UCAR or University Corporation for Aerospace Research says there are three types of contrails. A short-lived contrail forms immediately behind an airplane as a bright white line that lasts for only a short while. Those are straight, thin clouds you see behind an airplane. These occur when the air is somewhat moist. A persistent, non-spreading contrail will stay in the sky long after the airplane has flown out of sight. It can last for a few minutes or longer than a day, and it keeps the shape of a thin line. These contrails occur when the air is very moist. A persistent, spreading contrail also occurs when the air is very moist, but these grow wider and fuzzier as time passes, and it can seem to look like a cloud. Several reports tie the start of the chemtrail conspiracy theory in 1996 report from the U.S. Air Force titled, Weather as a Force Multiplier of Using the Weather in 2025. The official report provided a strategy for U.S. military air forces to use weather for a strategic advantage. Using weather to assist in military operations could be used in war fighting operations. One example of this strategy that was theorized, outlined in the report, suggested that adding carbon to the atmosphere would increase reflection to help camouflage. Airplanes afterburner jet engines could disperse high amounts of carbon while flying through the air. The report said the sun would reflect off the carbon particles, causing a blinding effect and providing camouflage that shields the airplane. That combined with stealth technology can make an aircraft invisible to radar, which is quite fascinating. This research paper is one of the first official documents penned by a military branch that addresses a possible need for airplanes to be equipped with a capacity to disperse something from a jet engine with the purpose of manipulating an enemy. Now, another question for conspiracy theorists is, if it's camouflaging for war or an enemy, why would they use it on their own grounds? I'm sure you guys have a lot of, and ladies have a lot of answers to that. So please let me know down in the comments. 
That's why it's believed this research paper is the spark that ignited the conspiracy of chemtrails. According to public policy polling, about 5% of Americans believe in chemtrails. That's more than 4% who believe lizard people are taking over politics. So if you love lizards and you support Trump, that's up to you. I love lizards and amphibians, but I do not support Trump. He's a crazy man, but that is my opinion. 5G is another claim that goes with COVID-19. It is only in the latest iteration of mobile towers causing diseases. Before this, 3G caused SARS and 4G swine flu, according to 2020 polls. In all gaffes, 5G is depicted as either Satan's strategy or to advance the apocalypse or the work of technology capitalists, government capable that seeks to reduce the population and profit from vaccines, even though vaccines are free, or embed microchips into vaccines for the purpose of surveillance or control, such as the October 4th World USA strategy warning us just to kill USA. So if it was to kill all the vaccinated people, why would it only target USA, is my question. Combining this is Bill Gates created microchips and vaccines to control the population with 5G. Even though there is no evidence, people on social media continue to believe it. That is our generation currently. I mean, I love Darwin effect as most people, but we move on. In the end, I guess I will be controlled by 5G and I will also be controlled by October 4th, 2023 of the alert system. Now currently you are first witnessing beyond your view of right now, I am a zombie and I'm recording a video. So in history, I'm the first zombie on YouTube. Thank you. Let me know in the comments down below your favorite conspiracy and also what you think is a possibility of something circumstantial, such as my belief is JFK was possibly accidentally killed by somebody else, including the gunman, because there's a, a bullet that wasn't part of the rifle itself. It, was, it belonged to more of a machine gun type that blew his head off, which is suspicious. And that one bullet was also somebody behind him that was a security. So I think when he jumped on the car, he accidentally blew JFK's head off. But that is my interpretation. I may dive into it in another video. Here's part one, possibly more of conspiracies that I will be debunking. Let me know down in the comments of what you think of conspiracies. No judgment if you believe in a conspiracy. We all have our ideas of things. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.